All good. Thank you very much. So seven years ago, we talked right here about fake news, how some elections were made, uh, how bots are used to manipulate public opinion. But there are some things which are significantly changed in the recent years. And I would highlight two things here. So first is a buzzword, which is accessibility of AI. And the second thing, which is not talked too much, is IoT angle, like IoT and expansion of IoT and global connectivity. So, and this talk is dedicated to the changes which those two technology pillars are bringing into the field of cognitive warfare, public opinion manipulation, and hacking the human brains. So we call this human process compromise, and it's a variety of business process compromise which are not having direct ties to uh, cybersecurity because it's affection of business process or like humans. And if you think from threat intelligence point of view and uh, defensive point of view, you have a variety of security tools. You defend an organization, you defend in the country, while for attacker, all those defenses for the mature attacker should be in attacker threat model. So attacker have a choice ever to attack through all the defenses or just bring the target or victim outside of visibility of those defenses, outside of visibility and those TTPs which are used to defend, and then uh, force the victim who have uh, legitimate access to the assets needed uh, to do something uh, on, uh, which much attacker needs. So uh, we have a variety of theories uh, related to public opinion manipulation and uh, like cognitive warfare, like how fake news are distributed for now. But I want to highlight one of the old book which was finally translated into English with innocent title fundamentals of sociolo sociology. So uh, this book is now available and downloadable. It's really could look like boring, but have very interesting concepts uh, which helping you to understand what is going on in the world. And I want to highlight several concepts here. So on the left, it's from the original book. On the right, it's modified version, like map it to IT. So the first concept is very important and called time law. And it states that over the time, the technologies or significant technologies are developing faster and faster. And if you look uh, on the top, you see like from production of paper to printing a press, to printing press, it took like roughly 75 generations, when it took like 16 generations to typewriter, and in shorter and shorter periods, uh, to go with radio, TV, and our means to distribute information. So, and um, at the first part of previous century, we crossed the borderline where significant technology changes are appearing at about the speed of generation. So roughly like 20, every 25 years we had a new technology. And for now, significant technologies are appearing several times uh, through generation and even several times like through decade. So that means that experience from our parents, uh, grandparents and previous generations are automatically outdated even like 10 years ago because your, ma'am, your mom or dad barely can explain you how to use iPhone, but your kid can do this. So, and for now we come into the age where your knowledge when you get in university degree can be outdated at the time you graduate from university. So, and this just kills all variety of options to change, to, to use experience from previous generations, and it's opened the way for more effective public opinion manipulation. So, 
Another thing uh, which is defined is, is in this book, it's called stability or predictability of object behavior. And the object could be like a person, society, company, country, and so on. So, and it states that it's easy to control the object which is in predictable state. So think about like you fly in a plane and when plane goes smooth, it's easy to control it. When it gets into turbulence, it takes more efforts. So if it takes more efforts for the entity who control it now, it's easy to switch the entity. So if we're talking about, let's say, political party which rule in the country, and our party which want to get into the power, so as long as, as everything in the country is fine, it's really hard to change the party. But as long as uh, unrest is going, street protests, it's really hard to manage the country. And this is opportunity for ours to change the power with less effort. So that's why we see those revolutions, street protests, which are often coming uh, before the regime change or anything. So it's like moving this object, which is country, into unstable state. And this helped a lot with changing uh, the direction. So I just illustrated this with myself, uh, like sitting on the chair with three and one leg. So it takes different efforts, right? And uh, we can use dynamic programming approach uh, to see like the objects with desirable states and stages. So, and you can see like you go to the particular state with particular probability, like desired state can be like on the top. But if you put efforts and if you use external forces at particular stages, you can switch the trajectory uh, to unnecessary thing for, uh, for the current manager, let's say, but necessary for the intruder or attacker. Uh, there is another way or option uh, to help to manipulate is uh, like the more fragmented knowledge society have, uh, about the situation. It's easy to manipulate because it's really hard to make conclusions uh, based on the fragmented knowledge. And it's really hard to manipulate uh, the people who have their all pictures, uh, full picture of what's going on. So this is something uh, which we're observing now and I will uh, touch this a bit later. So and there are a variety of options and approaches which can be used to manipulate society. Uh, so, and depending on the tasks, attackers can use a combination of those or particular ones. And when you're watching the news, uh, uh, like now, like you can see a lot of such things are going on. So what we're witnessing now is actually society uh, put into information bubbles uh, with geofencing, so like people in Europe watching particular TV channels which are not available like in the East, people in the East cannot watch uh, Western TV channels. So, and roughly this means that uh, societies uh, see only a part of the picture and this is exactly a fragmentation of knowledge. And the fragmentation of knowledge, it's easy to bring the agenda needed for the governments uh, to keep society stable. So while living inside the bubbles, uh, we are still options uh, indirectly figure out what is going on because information inside the bubbles are often curated or biased. So you can see the news like a small fire or like some fire started like because of UAV. And the next day you can see the news that in the same town, 13 churches were damaged. And you can look at the map, you can calculate the distance between the churches, their distribution to make your conclusion about like the first news, was it just a minor fire or something more serious just by adding several dots which you connect by yourself. But also you can jump outside the bubble to see like what happening in our bubbles. Uh, maybe you need like uh, VPN plus LLMs and uh, neural networks uh, like LLMs 
can be used uh, to bypass uh, the language barrier because uh, like you now you don't need to be a native speaker like we adjust with the language we adjust with cultural things so it's easy for us uh, to jump outside the bubble comparing to like 10 years before so ai have own angle and sometimes this angle leaves uh, the traces uh on the news we read so if you read the beginning of uh, those recent articles it has some red flags and reminds uh, chat gpt interactions uh, while where our roles of uh, ai here so ai can help you to connect the dots and extract patterns and uh, understand the information on the different languages you never spoke and cultural specifics but also ai can be used to adopt information flow to a particular society or the person and what is important now like roughly those llms uh, were trained already on human generated data sets so the next things are is kind of process what was generated by ai to improve ai where you will get like accumulating error or another alternative is to use iot data to adopt ai models in the near future so and here the iot angle come and this iot angle uh, like cover a lot of things uh, including like connectivity in the places you not expect like a coverage direct sensors censoring and uh, many other things so why iot angle so iot equipment it's hard to secure it's not so regulated because we normally get in regulation after some significant events or after some period of time and the more and more types of equipment are coming it's not easy to include everything in in the laws so it provides connectivity it's actually not presented enough in the majority of the risk models so like if you think about iot uh, for example like in the meeting room you have uh, microphones and you have like conference equipment right but does this conference equipment uh, uses 2fa 2fa anytime you come probably not so this risk model like just don't understand that those equipment can be exploited it could be used for wire tap and so on and it's widely iot is widely ever, uh, leveraged by criminals and state sponsored actors but what is more important it fill in this timing gaps induced by the time law because you need to adjust faster and faster and iot is an opportunity to adjust behavior based on the sensitive data uh, very fast so criminals are understand this we are over trusting like we can open banking banking account remotely uh, while criminals already like made iphones where we can substitute image on the cameras we can make a 3d model to bypass uh, authentication of your face and actually stole your identity and create banking account on behalf of you uh, if just you pay particular money so iot is widely exploited already by criminals so and uh, IT integrated with AI and biometrics so on underground you can buy services like give me a photo and trace where the person be being based on the city cameras in some regions IoT connected to the cloud even if you not expect expect this because like smart your smartwatch for example maybe don't have Wi-Fi function but through your phone it can send data to the cloud and uh, compromise of the cloud is also like like the data is processed in the cloud by third parties and uh, compromise of the cloud can lead to a significant uh, privacy breach because uh, for example this data can contain location can contain uh, health status actually it can be used like to see if you were drunk or not based on uh, on your heartbeat so and this data is already um, 
sold and monetize it. Uh, and you can see like the terms like uh, IoT powered predictive in predictive insights. And you already see concerns about the privacy and deep profile of the humans based on IoT data. So you can see like vacuum cleaner doing a map of your apartment. And at the same time, like it can do photos of you inside a room. So, and if you look into the privacy not notice from uh, IoT devices, so this is an example of smart TV. So all your behavior is already profile it's like your location, what you like, what you don't like, like recordings, what you purchase. And you can see the terms like interest-based advertisement. And what is important, you can see the terms like interest-based advertisement, which is based on automatic content recognition. So think about your connect, like your private laptop to your TV. And TV just based it on the picture shown on the screen, recognize it what you watch from your family library, and use this data to share with uh, third parties to analyze what you like, what you don't like, and so on. So, and it's turned into the level where you can engage uh, audience in advertisement uh, immediately after competitor shown the advertisement. So, and this can be easily leveraged um, in, for example, uh, election manipulation. Like when like Democrats get shown some advertisement, you can follow up and like ever blame them or just show your message immediately. So all the capabilities are already in place. And even devices like smart fridges, we know like what kind of food you like, what you don't like. So you provide you profile it uh, pretty deeply already, and the sensors of the devices are uh, giving you, giving attacker a lot of data, even if it's capable just to wire it up encrypted traffic, uh, it's possible to figure out what kind of devices, when you're coming home, when you're leaving, like what you do. And um, for our sensors like accelerometer, like or like by just wearing your phone in the pocket, it's possible to de determine your height, gender, uh, age group, and so on, and profile uh, where you've been without uh, GPS. So <clears throat> our cars is actually a, a phone on the wheels, so we know all your habits plus location, and uh, it shared this information with precision of several meters in the near real time. So for example, if it's the car like provided by the company or if it's politician's car, it could be traced like if person was in the bar overnight or not, if the person was in the in our location while pretend to be working and so on. So this information can be used not just for normal manipulation but like in profiling but also for extortion. So where are we going with this scale and speed of IoT connectivity uh, together with AI capabilities? So if you think about this uh, like old school approach, like, I don't know, like 30 years ago, where was BBSs, so you can create any nickname, uh, you can pretend you are from uh, any location, and you fully control what you expose, you can create a fake character, and your presence was virtual and the, the timing was uh, occasionally like you post when you want and just a bit. So with social media networks, it's also virtual, but where are some data points which can be connected. So if you're posting the photos in social media networks, uh, we can be pivoted to the location. Sometimes you have location tags, sometimes you expose your face, but you're still in the control when you post, maybe you're not aware that you expose your biometrics, but uh, at least you're aware what you're posting. So, and now with IoT, you are surrounded with dozens of sensors, which just uh, access to your physical life in the physical locations, uh, indoors and outdoors, and sensing everything you do 
without your control what is shared, what is not, without your control of timing. So it's kind of physical sensing of all your habits, all your needs, all your behavior, without your control of where it's shared and how it's used. So, and we can see uh, several examples here, like a random uh, vacuum cleaner, I just picture it a, a person and posted this on the Facebook, or virtual reality headsets like can be leveraged to show the content uh, which we're not supposed to show. So, and um, also we have already like for years academic articles uh, which where advertisement can use to trace particular social groups or particle location of particular people. So if you know the profile of the person, for example, and you want to know where the person is, you can just order an advertisement which is uniquely matched to this profile. And when advertisement shown, you will know where it was shown so you know where the person is or where the social group is. So those angles are really concerning and uh, like not so many people thinking about this, like where we come in, uh, in the near future. So also, uh, you remember this man in the browser attacks when your credit cards were skimmed because uh, like the banking data was just faked to an, uh, cards are skimmed or you did, did, did the money sent to the wrong location because uh, the content of the web page was slightly changed. So the same way it could be monetized to push the fake news and uh, push cognitive agenda instead of just stealing money. So IoT equipment can be used to target physical events, control how attacks like cogn cognitive attacks, like, like crowd manipulation attacks are going or even like adjusting those, like showing random messages, not like this, but uh, more sensitive uh, on the, or is showing a video deep fake, uh, which would be not detected as deep fake uh, on the billboards, advertisement billboards uh, can trigger some activity. So where we're going now is actually, we're living in the big bubbles. Uh, we have like several like big bubbles where information is created. But we go in, uh, with IoT connectivity, we go in into the smaller bubbles where IoT equipment can sense your need and show needs and show what, you, only what you need. So it could be a bubble based on your home, like, like your family environment. So you like this, you like this, and you never, and, and you will get visibility on similar things. So you never will see what's going in or around. The same could be on the corporation, corporate level or or like social groups level. So, so the bubbles are getting smaller and um, uh, the, when people are split, it's easy to manipulate individual groups uh, comparing to the bigger bubbles. So, and I see already where some regulations, for example, like how AI is used, how sensitive data is used on European level. And as we heard yesterday on the keynote talk, this potentially triggered by uh, the necessity in European Union of using uh, models from foreign countries. So if you're not regulate this, you will just manipulate it a lot. And we can think about approaches uh, which is similar to zero trust, uh, but like reverse version of zero trust. So. So uh, when you just see the events, you don't understand them and you cluster them now, but tagging them a bit later, like, oh, it was like a, a fake news campaign. You can do this later, but at least like you, 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 you can use the similar approach and did, didn't trust to, to the information uh, you uh, received immediately. So, and um, as a conclusion, like we come into the era with a really damaging situation when there is no privacy, and uh, the only thing we can regulate, as I feel, is like how data is used uh, in ethical manner, but your data, like your biometrics is stolen from the social network, your behavior is predicted by uh, IoT sensors. So we have a life in the bubbles, which is very comfortable, 
but you need to choose your bubbles wise and you need to jump outside the bubbles time to time not to forget what is happening around. So thank you very much and if somebody have questions. Well, thank you for being part of the Hack Loop bubble. <laughs> Any questions? We may have time for one or two if they are not too long. So we have another talk on cognitive warfare soon, which probably will be focused on case studies or recent case studies. So that's why like, I decided to give you insights about bigger picture. So. All right, no questions. Thanks a lot, okay. Vladimir. So all the questions would be in corridor.